This message comes from NPR sponsor Viore, a new perspective on performance apparel. Check out the latest Dream Knit collection by visiting viore.com slash NPR for 20% off your first purchase. Exclusions apply. Visit the website for full terms and conditions. About 10 years ago, the town of Espo, Finland, had a problem with thousands of young people gathering on the beaches and committing crimes, some of them very serious crimes. Inspector Hanu Vanenen had an idea to stop it. Can you tell us about that? Yes. In Finland, in central Finland, they had used classical music in a shopping mall. The, the youth, youth didn't like the classical music, so so they evaded it. And uh, then I, I'm, I'm a little odd in, in uh, this police station. I, I, I suggested to the uh, to our superiors that should we try to play the classical music at the beach, and we we played it. The, the youth usually they gather there around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. until the 1 a.m. the whole night, and we started the music at 4 or 5 p.m. So there was wasn't youth already there, and and the youth they did come in a small groups, but they started to move one by one, <laughs> one step, two step, three steps away from the music. <laughs> they, it wasn't loud. It was they could talk there, but I, I'm not sure what's what's the the <laughs> the problem with the classical music. But they they did move. It, it's it sounds like you just kind of changed the vibe of the beach to a place yes. they didn't think was cool anymore. Yes, I, I, something like that. Is is the if I'm am I right that the the vibe there the the, the scene at the beach with the classical music would almost make it perfect for a romantic picnic? Well, yeah, if you like Bach or Mozart or pan flute music, then it's okay. <laughs> and the people, some of the older people came and they enjoyed like a pizza and wine or something with the classical music. I get, yes. I guess, I guess that would be a danger that you would. By playing the classical music, you could be attracting too many old people. <laughs> well, well, they warned us about that. That my superiors also warned me about that. But that that's not the case yet. Yeah. Do you do you uh, in your in your private personal life? Do you listen to classical music? I uh, not much. Sorry about that. So it kind of had the same effect on you, didn't it? Well, it might have. It might have. <laughs> <laughs> This is How to Do Everything. I'm Ian. And I'm Mike. On today's show, how to fix the net at your basketball game. But first, we got an email from Brian, which he sent from his seat at a minor league baseball game. He said he needed some help. Brian, what can we help you with? Um, Yeah, so right when I was watching a mascot race at the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs baseball game here in Allentown, Pennsylvania, they do a mascot race in the middle of one of their innings, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was like, how can I do this? And how hard are these costumes to run in? What, who are the, what are the mascots that are racing? Um, So it's all pork based characters. Um, My favorite is Chris P. Bacon, P period bacon, Uh a slice of bacon. Diggity is a hot dog. Hambone is a slice of ham. Um, Hambone always loses. Um, There's barbecue. That's a pulled pork sandwich. And okay. then they added um, somebody recently, Ribby, it's a rack of ribs. So there are five. Well, that actually raises a question that I have, Brian. So for Hambone, what is the shape of Hambone? If Hambone always loses, is that an issue because aerodynamically Hambone is more, has more surface area? Uh, that is, that's a good point. I mean, Hambone is kind of what you would think it's like a hawk of ham the heart harder to move in that than say like a vertical hot dog although yeah i mean you could argue that the hot dog could be hard because it's what it, it could be very top heavy i i've always wondered if it's rigged like if somebody at the top of the the organization says you know today it's it's you crispy bacon really um, like to what end yeah. do you think though is it just like to give crispy bacon his due or her due yeah you all think that it's a real fair contest. I think there are occasions when it's fair, but now that you say it, I mean, with the rise in sports gambling, you you have to wonder if there's like an underbelly here. Well, Brian, I think we have somebody who can help us here. The most treasured of all the mascot races is the Johnsonville famous racing sausages race at Milwaukee Brewers games. Online with us now is 
their Italian sausage. And we've been told, I'm being completely serious, uh, in no uncertain terms, we've been told not to reveal the human identity of this sausage. So Italian sausage, how long have you been doing the sausage race? Ooh, uh, I've been doing it for close to 15 years. So I've lost track of how many races I've run. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm typically the Italian. I, I, I'm partial to the Italian. It's, it's the costume I, I won my first race in, mm-hmm. but we switch it up. Sometimes oh. I'll hop into the bratwurst or the hot dog. Um, we also have the Polish and the chorizo. Mm. So is it, it's always you and is it the same three or four other people in the other sausage costumes? No. So we actually have um, anywhere from 30 to 50 people uh, that, oh, wow. that do it. Yeah. I mean, it would be crazy to to commit to every every home game like that. Yeah, um, yeah. But no, yeah, we do mix it up. You know, one of the most common questions we get is, uh, well, is it, is it fixed? Is the race predetermined? And I can tell you that absolutely not. We try. It is it is legit. It's, it gets competitive. We are out there racing our butts off, and it is it's exhausting. It's a <laughs> I don't know the how long it is, but it's you know we go from the opposing dugout to all the way past the home dugout and the camera well, well into the outfield, and it's yeah. In the summer months, it get it is hot. It is sweaty. It is a physically demanding <laughs> experience. What? What Italian sausage, which of the sausages has an advantage? Generally, we would say the four that are not chorizo, because the chorizo has the sombrero. Oh. Okay. And that, that adds some extra weight um, yeah. and some aerodynamic um, implications that, that you have to factor in. Sure. If you had the power to animate... I'm sorry. If you had the power, Italian sausage, to animate... All five sausages. You were given the gift. Which of the five sausages, real sausages, would win a race? I would have to say hot dog because it's the most slender. Yeah. Not a lot of extra, you know, weight to it. Now, our, uh, we, Mike, a second ago accidentally said your name, which we have bleeped out. <laughs> and it, it was very clear as we were setting up this interview that we were, only to refer to you as Italian sausage, we are to protect your identity, uh, which we're happy we're happy to do. I am curious why though, why that's important. Are they afraid that somebody is going to try and influence the sausage race by finding you in your human life? Or I think it goes back to just sort of mascot code in general. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, you go to Disney parks and and they're always in character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's sort of how we look at it. Do you? Do you have a rival, either a rival sausage or a rival human inside of the sausage costume? Like, is there is there somebody you always want to beat? Yeah, there have been some rivalries. I, I had a run in with with the chorizo once, so it was the gosh twentieth anniversary of the sausage race or something. It was it, it was it was a landmark day. It was a big deal, and tried to take an aggressive turn around around home and chorizo is is kind of in the same line and we bump and i fall and still managed to get back on my feet and finish third but i happened to make it on sports centers not top 10 for <laughs> for this how'd that feel you know it felt like something i wanted to share with everyone like <laughs> it didn't matter you know it's like and i asked people like okay i'm the not top 10 do, do i want to be higher or I, I was number eight. Oh yeah like, uh-huh. if i'm going to be on the not top 10 don't don't i want to just go all the way for number one right like yeah yeah additionally they had me fill out an injury report because <laughs> i scraped my knee a little bit so i had to fill out this injury report for you know the club policy yeah and and there are these the, this questionnaire it's like uh you know, was another employee involved <laughs> in the incident? And I said, yes, incidental contact with Chorizo. <laughs> I mean, I I have to just, I have to ask, how can Mike and I get in a sausage race? How, can, how do we do it? We will be there at the drop of a hat. Yeah. You guys just say the word and we'll, we'll get you booked. I gotta be honest, I didn't think that last part was gonna work, but we are going to Milwaukee to be sausages. You'll know we're there. 
when we start speaking in hushed tones. All right, we're at American Family Field, where the Milwaukee Brewers play baseball. We're starting out uh, at the tailgate. I, and I should say we invited uh, Peter Sagel to join us here in Milwaukee. He is, of course, usually our, uh, our taste tester. I figure climbing into a sausage costume that has been worn by countless hot, sweaty people running as fast as they can, that counts as a, a taste test. There will be a flavor within. It's definitely right. a sensory experience. Like you're going to sense things and smell things probably, and maybe even taste things depending on what you're doing in there. I am extremely excited about this. This is, this is uh, in fact, I'm so I'm so excited about it, it's almost like a weird thing that you invited me to do it, because usually my attitude is dread, but I'm very excited. You think we're going to trick you at some point? Oh, I, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, it can't be this great. I mean, there has to be a catch. Okay. We'll, we'll find a way to meet your dread, I think. <laughs> okay. So we're about to go back there. We've, we've sat through three innings of this game. Looking at the field on which we're about to run, uh, what, are, what are you all feeling about it? Uh, growing anxiety. You feel nervous. Well, yeah, not just because of the game. There are a lot of people here. And you'll note that during every sort of interstitial moment, everybody's paying a lot of attention. Like they had that, you know, find the coin or the whatever, the ball under the baseball hat yeah. animation. Everybody was playing. Everybody was shouting out their answer. They're going to be watching us. But here's the thing, and if you, don't, if you didn't know this already, they're not going to know it's us. Oh, I'm, I'm well aware of they that. Know, but, think but you still might sausages. fall down. I, that's exactly <laughs> it. What if I, as whatever sausage ended up being, fall down? People will be telling for years. They'll say, oh, did you see that night? The Polish fell down. I was there that night. What do you guys think? I'm not nervous. I have no expectation. I just, I just want to finish. Nina, how are you, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah grow, growing anxiety. I'm just, like, dancing in my chair a little bit more than I used to be. There are a ton of people here. The sausages also are, like, everywhere, like, so. What sausage do you want to be? Not chorizo. Anything but chorizo. What do you want to be? I, 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 anything but chorizo, which probably means I'm going to end up being the chorizo. Peter, would you like to be the chorizo? I would not like to be the chorizo. Well, I'm sorry. We man. can edit out where he said not. Well, first of all, we have some bad news, Peter. Yeah, well, I figured. Let me show you a text that I sent to my friends. I was told to avoid the chorizo because you can't see them from under the hat, so I'll probably get the chorizo. <laughs> I don't want to be the chorizo. Okay, let's, let's get to it. Uh, they take... Hina, Mike, Peter, and me, they take us all down beneath the stadium to get our costumes on. And uh, this guy gives us this big spiel about the rules. A lot of it has to do with the mascot code. Yeah, apparently, and and I hadn't really thought about this, in retrospect, thinking back about my encounters with mascots, it makes a lot of sense. The thing they're, they're most concerned about is breaking the illusion that the, in this case, the sausage, is in fact a sausage rather than a person in a sausage suit. Well, I think we should reveal, so we, we're about to go out on the field here and, and actually do this race and see which of us triumphs. It's the four of us and uh, uh, somebody from the Mets who was, he, he took the role of hot dog. I was Italian sausage. Ian, you were bratwurst. I was Polish. And that means there's only one person left to be chorizo. Can we let the, can we let the listeners guess who that was just for a moment? Should we do that? All right, fans, time now for the Johnsonville famous racing sausage race. Wearing number one, it's the Johnsonville Bratwurst. Number two, we have the Johnsonville Polish Sausage. Wearing number three, the Johnsonville Italian Sausage. Wearing number four, the Johnsonville Hot Dog. And number five, it's the Johnsonville Chorizo. All right, sausages, on your mark, get set, go. They're off and racing the hot dog, taking an early lead with the chorizo to the inside in second. It's the Polish in third, the Bratwurst moving up now with the Italian trailing the field. They make the turn, and they're heading down the stretch. At least the hot dog is. He's all by himself tonight. It's the hot dog all alone at the wire. Obviously, the hot dog, the one of us that was not, (laughs) the one person who was not one of us, jumped out to a huge lead. If you're watching it on the Jumbotron, after about five seconds, none of us were even visible because he was so far ahead of us. I was like, is that a false start? 
Did I miss the start? Because it just seemed so unlikely. Yeah. Exactly what I that, thought, yeah. yeah. You saw him too? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I could saw him. Focus I saw him on anything. running so quickly that I was like, there's just simply no way that they actually said go. You know why I don't think I saw anybody? Because I was in last place. Mm-hmm. I just saw you guys. Mm-hmm. All I saw was Hina, and I just knew that mm-hmm. I, I had to beat I couldn't be last. Ultimately, that's where the drama for the crowd that. was. Uh, was was who was going to be last between Mike and Hina. Because it was yeah. neck and neck mm-hmm. for the bottom. And I think, I've seen video, and I do think we tied. The hot dog guy smoked us. Completely. We were smoked yeah, sausages. Hey, and if you have any questions you want us to answer, you can send them to us at howto@npr.org. At That's our email address, and we promise we look at every email we receive. If your question is that you are currently stuck inside of a bratwurst costume, I'll just tell you right now, just uh, bend both of your elbows the other way, uh, unlock your hips, and rotate your head 360 degrees. This message comes from Schwab. It's easy to invest in ideas you believe in with Schwab investing themes like online music and videos, artificial intelligence, and electric vehicles. Choose from over 40 customizable themes. More at schwab.com. Support for NPR and the following message come from Rosetta Stone, the perfect app to achieve your language learning goals no matter how busy your schedule gets. It's designed to maximize study time with immersive 10-minute lessons and audio practice for your commute. Plus, tailor your learning plan for specific objectives like travel. Get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership for 50% off and unlimited access to 25 language courses. Learn more at rosettastone.com NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor Rosetta Stone, an expert in language learning for 30 years. Right now, NPR listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership to 25 different languages for 50% off. Learn more at rosettastone.com slash NPR. Hey, we got, uh, we got some listener mail, uh, some correspondence from you all that we would like to uh, acknowledge. First up, we got something from Madeline or Madeline. Uh, just wanted to report back that I have never seen the movie The Champ, and when I heard the short snippet from the movie you played in the archive episode, I didn't cry. But when I heard Mike start crying, I unexpectedly started crying with full tears. I also have young kids, so maybe that's it. Madeline, I feel your pain. I inspired your pain. You caused caused. I caused pain. your pain. I caused your pain with my pain. I have not watched The Champ in the years since we recorded that episode. Have you, Ian? Well, no, I haven't. But I'll say, listening back to our podcast episode, in which I did not cry, yeah. in which I was completely stone-hearted, yeah. I cried when I heard you cry. Did you <laughs> I did. I've had... I have kids. I didn't have them when we recorded that episode yeah but um you also caused my pain oh well you're welcome here's another one this is from oliver he's responding to our recent episode about things that are world famous he's writing from australia he says i will preface that i'm from the east coast of australia but here we call the event of a hot dog sale a sausage sizzle okay and we call a hot dog itself a snag okay i don't think i would ever do that I don't think I'd be comfortable ordering a Chicago style snag. I will say I can say that I was just moments ago completely humiliated by a very fast snag. Yeah, see when you said that, I was sure I wasn't sure if we needed to mark this episode explicit or not. Oh, we also we also want to point out one of our reviews on Apple Podcasts. This is from Hydro Flask Water Bottle who asks, Do you guys actually read these? I think the answer is obviously yes. We are currently doing so. Yep. Hydro flask water bottle. The Cocoa Beach High School basketball team was playing a game, and the net went up through the hoop and got stuck. The players kept jumping up to try and knock it down, but nothing was working. The game was stopped. The game could not go on. So Bella Haley Jatana uh, from the Cocoa Beach High School cheerleading squad uh, can you tell us what you did? Well, we were just sort of cheering like we would normally do. And then the game just sort of stops. It's like we were just watching them struggle for like 
a fat minute until we sort of realized like, wait, when we do pep rallies and stuff, my head goes past the rim. So we decided to, you know, show off one of our skills and solve the problem at the same time. You know, it was easy peasy. Okay. For Mike and I, who don't know a lot about cheering. Can you describe what you did? So there was three of us. We had a back spot and two side bases. Okay. Those are fresh. That's fresh vocabulary for us here. Back spot, (laughs) side bases. So the girl that is the back spot, she is behind holding. Okay. So basically what they're describing here, none of the boys on the basketball team could fix the net. So the cheerleaders did, you know, we've all seen it kind of a basic cheerleading pyramid with one of them way up in the air uh, and she untangled the net yeah it looks awesome it was was like actually tangled up in there but they got me high enough so i was able to clearly be able to untangle it how did the crowd react because it you know it looks like you're just kind of doing your thing i think for a second they didn't like some of them didn't really realize what was like (laughs) going on and then like you heard one kid from the other like side go like oh and like then like, people started like clapping and stuff so we were like oh well this is fun <laughs> did the uh did the boys on the team did you sense that you had bruised any egos when they were unable to help and you were i mean they just sort of went back into their game and sort of just let it go yeah sweep it under the rug like it never happened <laughs> yeah there you go a funny piece of information is bella's brother is actually on the basketball team so oh. his sister had to come out for the rescue <laughs> pretty awesome. yeah oh. he was just standing there helplessly <laughs> bella does your brother feel bad that you can probably dunk better than he can <laughs> uh, I don't think so. He's actually, he's pretty close to dunking right now. So I think he's fine with it. How many side bases does it take for him to dunk? <laughs> Maybe one or two. There you go. There you go. <laughs> have you all any other time in your in your life when you're not at a game cheerleading, have you used your cheerleading skills to help out in other ways? I actually use it sometimes at work. Instead of there being like, you know, three bases, it's just me and the person that needs to, you know, grab something from the top shelf. I just kind of make the same hand motion and just like lift them up a little bit. Wow. It still works like to help them up. Awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having us. Thank you. Well, that does it for this week's show. What'd you learn, Ian? I learned that the mascot code is very real and and people take it very seriously did you let me just ask you was there ever a point when we were on the field we're giving high fives or we're doing our best to give high fives because the fact is because we have no peripheral vision and because i didn't feel comfortable turning i couldn't actually turn to look at the people i was giving high fives in the stands so there were a lot of it was like there were a lot of phantom high fives i there you know all the fans are leaning through the netting that is up to catch foul balls. I was giving every high five I could. I got very nervous that my costume was going to become entangled in the netting. I saw it all happening, that that then it would tear the costume from my body as my human self fell to the ground. Uh, Children everywhere, the mascot code would be broken. Children would see that there was a man within. There would just be tears. That's not a real bratwurst. That's what people, you think that's what people would say. He's not the bratwurst we thought he was. How to Do Everything is produced by Polish Sausage, Hina Srivastava. Technical direction from Lorna White. Our intern this week is the hot dog that beat us in the sausage race. Congratulations, hot dog. Get us your questions at howto at npr.org. I'm Ian. And I'm Mike. Thanks. Thanks. So, did you watch the sausage race? Yes. What'd you think? It was pretty funny. Yeah. Who was your your favorite sausage? Uh, The chorizo has always been my favorite. Yeah. So, this guy right here was the chorizo. Oh, really? Yeah. I was. I was. What happened? What happened? You ask me what happened? I came in third. Look. I won my age group. Support for NPR and the following message come from IXL Online. Is your child asking questions on their homework you don't feel equipped to answer? IXL Learning uses advanced algorithms to give the right help to each kid, no matter the age or personality. 
One subscription gets you everything. One site for all the kids in your home, pre-K to 12th grade. Make an impact on your child's learning. Get IXL now. And NPR listeners can get an exclusive 20% off IXL membership when they sign up today at IXL.com slash NPR. This message comes from NPR sponsor, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. AI may be the most important new computer technology ever, but AI needs a lot of processing speed, and that gets expensive fast. Upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. OCI is the single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. Do more and spend less like Uber 8x8 and Databricks Mosaic. Take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash NPR.